First of all, what's very interesting is that often in America they talk about one God, one God, and one God, and one God we trust. But the God of the world, and the God in particular in America, which is worshipped, is called Mammon. Mammon. Mammon is that God. Mammon. That's what the prosperity pimps and so-called preachers out there, the TV evil angelists, that's what they deal with. They deal with the God of Mammon. You know what I'm saying? We're not talking about the God of Mammon when we speak about tithing. Because remember that, that Satan, that the Diablos, the devil, is not really in that sense when they say original thinker or in the sense that the devil has really created, in the sense of really truly created anything. All he is is an evil recreator, just like a lot of these prosperity pimps and, and antichrists and counterfeit Christians out there. They, they take the word of God. You understand? They take the true word of God and they twist it. They turn it. They they manipulate it. You understand? And they don't deal with the fullness of it. You understand? They deal with it in a in their own so called pseudo pseudo gnosis or or, or scientific way. In a scientific way. In other words, what we're trying to say is that Satan has taken the things of God, and therefore, when it says in the Bible that it should not it should not like surprise us that Satan transforms himself to be a minister of God and the, and, and his angels also a minister of light. In other words, a minister of light and his angels and righteousness and his angels also transform themselves to be ministers of righteousness. You understand? So when we're speaking about the God of the world, you understand? And when we're speaking about the so called the God of America and the, and these prosperity pimps and preachers. We're speaking about mammon. And the Bible says something very interesting about mammon. And we have to understand this thing called mammon. You understand? And the one God of Babylon. You understand? Which is mammon, which is money. And in order to overcome that spell, some call it the spell Leviathan. Some call it the deception of Satan or Lucifer. You understand? But in order to overcome that, one must be born again. You see, when one's born again, one doesn't conform to the world, but one has been transformed by the renewing of their mind. Therefore, our psychology, you understand, our suke, psyche, which means, in the Greek, is the soul. Our psyche and our psychological involvement in our born again and being born again and birthing again process is very, very crucial and is very, very important. Therefore, any preaching or ministering that does not entail or touch on these issues and proclaims or purports to be of Jesus Christ that doesn't deal with that is a counterfeit, a counterfeit doctrine, is a counterfeit teaching because it's clear that Christ, he addresses that layer when he says for us to be born again. I see a lot of these counterfeit prosperity pimps and preachers out there will say believe, in the word believe in their make-believe. But they're not truly teaching Amen and not truly teaching faith. You understand? Know the true and the faithful witness of Gitachin Jesus Christos. They're not that's not what they're dealing with. And more importantly, they're not dealing with repent. With the whole idea of repenting and what repenting truly and really means. Nor are they addressing the God of the world. They're not addressing the God of the world. You understand? Know that which opposes opposes the truth. So therefore, when they start preaching about God, these prosperity prim pimps start going about God, so forth and so on, and God this and God that, and make a little quote here or there out of one of one of these various kind of new world order Bibles and everything. Some of them still stick to King James, but a lot of them in these new Bibles, because it's easy to pimp out the people with these new versions and perversions of the Word of God. I mean, even the Bible talks on, on that, on those who handle the word of God as though it were some sort of for profit. Now, speaking about these false prophets, let's turn our Bibles to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 4 and 2. On something very important that's mentioned in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and 2, it says, speaking on the ministry, and we're speaking on our ministry, the line of Judah ministry. It says, therefore, seeing that we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Now, we faint not because, now, the principle here is that the truth, the truth that is taught, 
right? Because the truth taught is commended by the life, by the life. What, what sort of life are we living? Now, we know we're, we're in the belly of the beast, and we know that we've been under a curse. We, we, we recognize and we should recognize these things by now. You understand? So as we learn the truth, and as we do not be any longer conformed to the world, but be renewed by the transformation of our mind, and therefore our action, our life, and our way of living, needs to reflect that, and must reflect that. So as Rastafari, you understand? As Ethiopian Hebrews, we have to ask ourselves, how are we living? Because the truth taught is commended, by the life, by the life that we are living, and therefore the life of the ministry is what's being spoken of here in Second Corinthians chapter 4 at verse 2. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. We're not to handle this word of our Godfather, the Metaf Kedus, the Holy Scriptures, the Bible, the glory of His Imperial Majesty, deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, manifesting the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And now that's a very important verse right there. So we ought to commend ourselves to everyone's conscience, but everyone's conscience in the sight of God. In other words, it's not what everyone sees, you understand, and from everyone's opinion, just in the sight of everyone's opinion, but it's in everyone's opinion or, or conscience in the sight of God. So God is the judge and the arbitrator. So if ones and ones look at us and their conscience is not in the sight of God, it really matters not, you understand, upon our conscience. You understand, because they are astray, they are out of the way, but if they are in the sight of God and seeking to be in the sight of God according to their ability, then perhaps we should entertain those strangers. Because not self, but Christos Jesus is the Gita. He is the Gita. He is the Adonai that is preached. But if our gospel be hid, it be hid to them that are lost. So, if what we're saying here on Yah's people tithe, and the tithing of Yah's people, of the true Rastafari and Ethiopian Hebrews, and it's hid from some, some don't, they, they don't get it. Like some people say, they, they're not able to understand, and it's being truthfully preached and proclaimed, then our gospel be hid, it's hidden to those who are lost in whom the God of this world, the God of this world, and who is the God of this world? We're speaking about mammon. Mammon. Mammon is the God of this world, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds. You see, here's how they're blind, not just in their eyes, but their minds are blinded because it says, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which ma men not, which amen not. See, they put that word believe because they want you to make, make believe. You know what I'm saying? But if you study that word in the Greek to peace, peace, you understand? And then if you go to the Hebrew to, to amen and ma men and hymenot, which we get our word hymenat, hymenat, you understand, which is come down to us as hymenote, which we know as the our religion in in, in, in translation that is, is conventional translation will translate hymenote as religion, but truly if you break down that word, that word is faith and it means really living faith and it's connected with the Hebraic from the Hebraic root and the Hebraic establishment in Ethiopia. So the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which don't amen, those which don't amen, Revelation 3.14. Not, those which amen not, least the light or the illumination of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine to them. And when we speak of the glorious gospel of Christos, who is the image of God, we're speaking about the glorious gospel of Christ in his kingdom.
kingly character because it fulfills prophecy. It for, it's truth that his imperial majesty is king of kings. Now, when ones and ones say lord of lords, that's not true that he took the title lord of lords. And it's a very important theological point to be made in the fact that his imperial majesty did not take the title lord of lords. And when ones add lord of lords to his imperial majesty's title, they are in error. You're in error if you add Lord of Lords to his Imperial Majesty's title. You understand? And there's very important evidence, and that's basically the evidence, all the written evidence of the Emperor and of the Imperial government reflects that. And all the evidence in that which was written at that time concerning his Imperial Majesty, especially from the source of his Imperial Majesty, clearly reflects that. So we're speaking of the glorious gospel of Christ in his kingly character.